was the night of November 5th, 2020. No one had any idea of what would transpire that evening, of the event, or rather conglomeration of events, that would rock the foundations of society to their very core. It was the night that the internet lost its damn mind. It was two days after the presidential election, and everyone was on the edge of their seats, frothing at the mouth with anticipation over who would be the next president of the United States, a racist Cheeto or Uncle Touchy Feely. With this and the rising wave of COVID-19, humanity took its refuge in the last bastion of tranquility it had left, television. The popular TV show Supernatural, about two flannel-covered brothers fighting and killing monsters across America, was airing its third-to-last episode to an unsuspecting audience. And then, the event happened. So among a certain type of fan, Supernatural became popular because of a fan pairing between two characters, Dean Winchester, one of the aforementioned brothers, and their friend-slash-hunting partner, the angel Castiel. The ship known as Destiel, a portmanteau of the names Dean and Castiel, was quickly adopted by fans, since, at the time, the only other significant relationship in the show was between the two brothers. Not that that stopped some fans. Dean was killed at the end of season three and went to hell, but was resurrected by Castiel in the beginning of season four, and from their first interaction, fans interpreted a romantic connection between them. As the show went on and had more interactions between Dean and Cass, shippers only grew more and more fervent in their passion for Destiel. The show had a lot of scenes or lines of dialogue that could be interpreted as evidence of a romantic relationship, containing, but not limited to... Castiel, I see he has this weakness. He likes you. I'm hunted. I rebelled, and I did it all of it for you. Oh, Cass, not for nothing, but the last person who looked at me like that... I got laid. Uh, sorry, uh, you have me confused with the other angel? You know, the one in the dirty trench coat who's in love with you? Dean and I do share a more profound bond. Yes, get out of my ass! Writers, producers, and actor Jensen Ackles all denied at various points that anything Fruity. was going on between Dean and Cass, or displayed a certain flippancy about the whole idea, and basically gave the impression that any relationship between Dean and Cass was an interpretation of the fans and nothing more. Certain people involved with the show, like actors Misha Collins and Richard Spate Jr., seemed to enjoy the idea of Destiel, but it was pretty obvious that it was never supposed to be taken seriously. Nevertheless, the show continued to have these moments that suggested that Dean and Cass were more than friends. Whether this was intentional on the part of the cast and crew or not is unclear. As a matter of fact, there is some evidence that they may have tried to actively shy away from any Sweetie. business. In the episode Goodbye Stranger from season 8, Dean was originally supposed to say I love you to Cass to get him to snap out of an episode of Mind Control. However, Ackles and the director of the episode thought that it was out of character for Dean to say as such, and the line was changed to I need you. It's me. Oh, family. I need you. I need you. Either way, these inclusions of gay subtext, or hints that Dean and Cass were in love, were often called out as queerbaiting by frustrated fans. Queerbaiting is a practice wherein writers of a show will hint at a gay relationship developing, but never intend to actually legitimize it in the text. This is done in the hopes that LGBT viewers will keep watching, but also so that the homophobic or conservative viewers don't get uncomfortable or offended by the inclusion of any Sweetie. characters in the show. It's a very cheap and cowardly way of writing. Ahem. <clears throat> Many fans were really hopeful that Destiel would become canon. They thought it would provide important representation for queer men, especially in Dean Winchester, who's portrayed as a red-blooded manly man. But most Destiel shippers knew this would never happen, and for the most part, they were fine with that. They were content to write and read fanfic and talk about Destiel to their fellow fans without the need for Destiel to become canon. And then Destiel became canon. <laughs> So, November 5th, Supernatural, after a mid-season hiatus in its 15th and final season due to the COVID-19 pandemic putting production on hold, has come back on the air. Keep in mind that Castiel was first introduced in the first episode of season 4. It's now the end of season 15, which means that the Destiel pot has been on simmer for 12 years. And that night, the pot finally began to boil. 
So some backstory is necessary here. At the end of season 12, Cass was killed. When angels and demons die in Supernatural, their essences go to a place called the Empty. It's basically a big black void. But the Empty is also a conscious entity, and it likes its sleep, so it prefers things quiet. A few episodes after Cass dies, his essence is awoken by the powerful Nephilim Jack, which disturbs the Empty. Cass tells the Empty that if it doesn't return him to life, he'll keep the Empty awake for eternity. The Empty is like, okay, fine, and brings Cass back on Earth. Fast forward to season 14. Cass and Jack go to heaven for reasons that are unimportant here. Jack gets to meet with his mom, who died giving birth to him, but then the Empty shows up and wants to consume Jack, since he's half-angel and therefore will go to the Empty when he dies instead of heaven. Cass, who is basically Jack's adoptive father, makes a bargain with the Empty. Let Jack go to heaven when he dies so he can be with his mom, and Cass will go willingly with the Empty and cease to exist. The Empty argues with Castiel that he's already going to be consumed by it when he dies, so it provides the caveat that the Empty will show up to take him when he's found true happiness. And then when you finally give yourself permission to be happy and let the sun shine on your face, that's when I'll come. That's when I'll come to drag you to nothing. Now, Destiel shippers all across the board were like, well, Dean is Cass's true happiness, duh. But that's just silly fans projecting onto the show, right? Fast forward to season 15 in an episode called Despair. Appropriate. Death is pissed at Dean and is out for his blood. She chases him and Cass till they're trapped in a room with Death on the other side about to bust down the door. Cass paints a warding signal on the door to buy them some time, but Dean is resigned to the fact that he's about to die. Cass remembers his deal with the Empty, who for more plot reasons has beef with Death, and decides to summon the Empty to come and take him so that the Empty will take Death too in order to keep Dean safe. But in order for that to happen, Cass has to find true happiness. So what? does make Cass truly happy. The well? I always wondered, ever since I took that burden, that curse, I wondered what it could be, what, what my true happiness could even look like. I never found an answer. They fucking did it. <laughs> I've watched this scene like 18 times and I still can't believe that they actually fucking did it. Castiel tells Dean that his true happiness comes from something he can never have. He doesn't say what that is, but by the end of the scene, it's pretty obvious. He then goes on this long, impassioned monologue about how loving and wonderful and selfless Dean is, and how Dean has made Cass a better person. Dean asks Cass why this feels like a goodbye, and Cass says, Because it is. I love you. This is not the first time Cass has told Dean he loves him. In season 12, Cass thinks he's dying, so he says to Dean, I love you, and then adds, I love all of you, to Sam, Jack, and Dean's mom, Mary, people he considers his family. And while that I love you could be considered platonic or familial, this one is decidedly not. I've seen fans try to say that Cass meant I love you as a friend or a brother, but here's the thing. Cass's specific wording when he describes his true happiness is something I know I can't have. Well, Cass already has Dean's love as a friend and a brother. This has been well established. So it, that can't be it. Cass has to mean he's in love with Dean, and furthermore, he believes that love is unrequited. And if you're still in denial, actor Misha Collins confirmed that Cass's declaration was 100% meant as romantic. So Castiel like, makes this hom homosexual de declaration of love. You, you do know, Misha, we all knew. No, we all knew that, that, that uh, Castiel was in love with Dean. Before Dean can reply or react with anything other than shock, the Empty shows up to devour Cass. Death breaks into the room and she and Cass are taken away. The episode ends with Sam trying to get a hold of Dean on the phone, but Dean doesn't answer because he's sitting on the ground crying. So Destiel was canon at last, blindsiding the fandom at large and anyone who happened to be in the fandom's orbit. But no one could have predicted the aftermath that was to come. I remember sitting in my living room watching this happen on TV as it was airing. A lot of fans had already predicted that Cass was going to die in that night's episode, so I was just waiting for the hammer to drop. It was a simpler time then more innocent time. When I realized where the scene was going, th that the show was finally doing the one thing it had sworn over and over that it would never do, and Supernatural is a wild show. In one episode, a Nazi cult resurrects Hitler and Dean re-kills him. I remember my heart was racing so hard that I thought I was 
going to need to be taken to the hospital. Because like most fans, I ship Destiel, but I never thought that it would actually become canon. As soon as it happened, I texted a friend of mine and was like, uh, I think Destiel just became canon. My friend was skeptical because like me, she didn't expect the writers to actually go there. Luckily, someone had already posted the scene in its entirety to Tumblr, so I sent her the link and she starts losing her mind. Like, just like I was doing. Just like everyone on the internet was doing. Literally, Tumblr and Twitter were flooded with posts about Destiel. It became the number one trending topic on Twitter during the middle of a presidential election in which three separate swing states were in the process of turning from red to blue at the same time. It was that big a deal. So after the initial shock wore off, people began splitting off into factions. Some fans were genuinely happy that their ship had finally been recognized after 12 years of what many thought to be queer baiting. Some fans were angry that Destiel had been made canon, only then to turn around and murder a newly out character, and some fans were just shitposting. I was a mix of reactions, but I was mostly shitposting. See, people were quick to point out that Destiel becoming canon was not without its bitter dregs. For one, a lot of fans felt like if the writers had wanted to do Destiel, they had ample time to develop it into a legitimized relationship and shouldn't get representation credit for half-assedly tacking it on in the 11th hour. This ain't like Korasami, which had hard restrictions set on it by Nickelodeon when portraying queer romance. It's like Schrodinger's queer baiting. It is, but it isn't but it is. And then there is the fact that not only is Castiel killed off directly after confessing romantic love for another man, he is killed off because of it. The barrier gaze trope got its name from the common practice of murdering off queer characters more often than their straight cisgender counterparts. There's a lot of examples of this, like Tara McClay from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or Lexa from The 100, but Castiel's death is probably the most egregious example of this trope that I've ever seen. Still others were unsatisfied with Dean's response to Cass's confession. Or rather, his lack of response. I've seen people tear Jensen Ackles' performance in the scene to shreds, even going so far as to say that he's homophobic. Which, from what I can tell, isn't true in the slightest. I mean, Dean just had a lot of information dumped on him in a short amount of time. Plus, this is a man who is infamous for being bad at expressing his emotions. Like, give him a sec to process, y'all. So while the internet is having a meltdown over this... Putingate. News was leaked that Vladimir Putin was planning to step down as president of Russia, a claim that later turned out to be false. And somehow, in the midst of all this, the news about Putin somehow got absorbed by all the Destiel fervor, and suddenly all these memes about Putin retiring because Destiel was canon were going around. People were saying that they only found out about Putin because of Destiel shitposting. I mean, literally, if you Google Destiel that night, articles about Putin came up. And then... Georgia turned from red to blue. Georgia was one of the last states that was still counting votes for the presidential election, and so far it had been leaning toward Trump. But as votes from urban areas started coming in late, slowly Biden gained a lead on Trump. Need I remind you that Georgia generally tends to run conservative, so that along with being a swing state and one of the last four states to turn in their final ballot count was a pretty big deal. Then the same thing happened in Pennsylvania, another swing state counting late votes. And the Destiel hype train absorbed that too. <laughs> So by around four in the morning, roughly nine hours after the airing of Despair, Destiel had become this all-encompassing chimera of Cass's confession, Supernatural being gay yet somehow also homophobic at the same time, Putin resigning, the presidential race, COVID-19, the John Locke conspiracy for some reason, Ted Bundy cosplay, and other minutia I still don't understand. What the fuck do onions have to do with anything? People who had never even seen Supernatural were being bombarded with Destiel shitposting. It was a snowball rolling down a mountain at breakneck speed, and it was dragging us all along for the ride. It was sheer pandemonium. After a while, the fervor died down, especially after the winner of the election was announced to be Joe Biden. The internet turned its attention to other things. The next Thursday, the second to last episode of Supernatural aired, and there was little mention of Cass, and his love confession to Dean wasn't addressed at all. Destiel fans were varying degrees of disappointed to livid, but still had hope for the final episode. They needn't have bothered. The last episode of Supernatural was... fine. It was fine. I don't want this. What are you doing? 
A lot of fans, specifically Destiel fans, really hated the ending of Supernatural. One particularly salty BuzzFeed article described the finale of Supernatural as the last great American queerbait. Not only did the finale neglect to bring back Misha Collins for one last scene as Castiel, in which he and Dean reunite, despite establishing that he is, in fact, alive and hanging out somewhere in heaven, there's no emotional payoff for Cass's big confession. How does Dean feel about Cass? Do we know? Do we care? Apparently not. His feelings are never addressed, and Cass and his confession are completely forgotten. In a way, the finale of Supernatural was fitting in that it focused on the relationship between the two brothers, which has always been at the heart of the show. But the thing is, Dean and Sam aren't alone anymore. The biggest theme of the show is family, specifically found family. Family don't end with blood, boy. The Winchester brothers have friends and lovers that are largely ignored in the finale, and that felt like a real slap in the face. Like, Sam and Dean have evolved past their codependency, and yet their ending is all about how they aren't fulfilled without each other. Dean's story literally culminates in him just driving around aimlessly in heaven waiting on his brother to join him. Like, don't you have other people you want to see? Your parents? Charlie? Ellen and Joe? The fucking angel who loved you so much that he voluntarily went to super mega hell for gays to save your ass? Don't even get me started on how fucking stupid Dean's death is. Like, this is a man who has taken on the devil multiple times, God himself, and killed Hitler, and what gets him in the end is three inches of rebar in the back. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. And then he has the fucking longest death scene since Deadpool 2, during which Sam could have easily just called an ambulance and saved him. Like, I'm not against the concept of Dean dying in the end, but the way they took him out was just pathetic. Especially when his entire arc in the last season was fighting for the right to live his own life, only to die like a week later. Dean deserved better, Jensen Ackles deserved better, and hell, I deserve better. I wish I could tell you that this long and twisted saga ended here, but unfortunately... We have to talk about the fucking Spanish dub. Just when Supernatural Tumblr seemed like they were starting to get over the finale and content themselves with writing fix it fic until the cows came home, information was dropped that, apparently, in a Spanish version of Despair from Latin America, the confession was a lot more slashy than its American cousin. In the English version, the scene goes like this. I love you. I'll do this case. But in the Spanish dub, when Cass says, Te amo, I love you, the voice actor who dubbed over Dean's lines responded with, Y yo a ti, Cass, which roughly translates to, I love you too. Te amo. Yo a ti, Cass. And Tumblr lost its shit all over again. The SPN fandom went full John Locke conspiracy in trying to piece together tidbits of information that proved that the scene from Despair originally had Dean reciprocating Cass's feelings instead of just standing there dumbstruck. The plaintiff, the Destiel shippers, the defendant, the CW network, who allegedly forced the writers to ungay the scene between Dean and Castiel by removing Dean's reciprocation of romantic love and then continued their homophobic tyranny by cutting Misha Collins out of the last two episodes so to not have to address the big gay love confession and gay up their manly show about badass bros who listen to classic rock and drive muscle cars. If it please the court, I would like to now present the evidence. Exhibit A, the Spanish dub in which Dean says, I love you too. Exhibit B, a story about Jensen Ackles allegedly having to dub over some lines in post with crying noises. Exhibit C, uh, when Cass pushes Dean out of the way, Dean falls the wrong direction. See, the body should have landed on the other side from the way Cass pushed him. I know, highly sus. Couldn't have been a break in continuity so they could show off Cass's bloody handprint on Dean's shoulder, could it? Exhibit D, uh, the amount of tears in Dean's eyes don't match from shot to shot? Uh, multiple takes. Yep. Generally, when you're shooting something, you want to have multiple takes, just for posterity. It's a good practice in general for editing purposes. And this means that sometimes things aren't perfectly continuous, especially elements that are hard to control. Like teardrops. I think we have a solid case, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I'm really not here to take pot shots at the people who believe that there really was something going on. Just trying to impress upon you that when you're trying to find evidence for your beliefs, you can generally find it. But let's talk about Iyoti, since it is the soundest evidence we have. 
So, Supernatural fans worked out that if the Spanish translation had Dean saying I love you back to Cass, then clearly what must have happened was that the big mean evil executives at the CW must have scrubbed the gay from the original edit of the episode. But someone forgot to tell Latin America that because they went full gay in their version. We got them, boys. Roja handed. In hindsight, this was a pretty big leap in the conclusion department, but it didn't matter. Supernatural fandom was on a roll. For the second time in the month of November, the fans made it to number two on Twitter with the hashtag they silenced you. Again, in the middle of a global pandemic spike and a presidential administration change in which the sitting president is refusing to concede the race to the president-elect. Fan art of Dean and Cass when pride colors with black tape over their mouths was everywhere. And in the fans' defense, the prospect of a group of network executives censoring a creative work just for the inclusion of homosexuality is pretty horrifying. This is some shit Putin would do. Ah, see? Callback! What started out as a fun conspiracy quickly turned into a tsunami of fan rage. There was an uproar for the CW to come forward and admit this heinous act they'd committed, and to release the real footage where Dean returned Cass's feelings. Make Destiel canon again. A big focus on this was for Jensen Ackles to leak some on-set footage that he supposedly had on his phone from the day of filming. Hashtag release the Jensen cut. All of this culminated in Misha Collins tweeting a video in which he claimed that there was no conspiracy, no alternate ending, no collusion. The mistranslation of what Dean said in the scene was all on the part of a rogue translator. He also expressed that he was proud of despair and that he was irked that fans were expressing all this outrage. The most controversial thing he said was that Castiel dying wasn't a case of burying your gaze, which, uh, yeah, it kinda was. I mean, yes, they mentioned in the finale that Cass was brought back by Jack, but considering that the episode doesn't even do him the courtesy to allow him to appear on screen, again, it's like Schrodinger's barrier gaze. Many fans felt that Castiel, and to a certain extent, Dean, were killed off as punishment for loving men. What's really weird is that in the same livestream where Misha confirmed that Castiel's love for Dean was romantic, he also did call killing off Cass burying your gaze. And then he dies right after, after which plays into like a, a timeless Hollywood trope of kill the gays. So what changed his mind? The point is, a straight person telling a group of largely queer people that something wasn't homophobic when the queer people are saying that it absolutely was and that they were hurt by it. This ain't it, chief. Nevertheless, Misha seemed to immediately see the error of his ways. His tone in subsequent tweets was apologetic, and he invited fans to talk to him to explain why the ending had hurt them, willing to listen. See, I've been an actor, so I can kind of see into his head. I think what happened is that Misha was really excited about Castiel getting to express love for Dean. Remember, this man had been a vocal supporter for Destiel for a long time. He probably thought that fans would be really happy to finally be validated with Cass's love confession, and then was hurt when fans reacted acted with anger, and even went so far as to harass people who'd been involved with the making of the show for the real ending. So Misha reacted badly in kind. I think that people forget that actors have feelings too. He shouldn't have said some of the things he said, but he did see why what he said was insensitive, and he made amends. I see lots of comments about how tone deaf my video was. I agree, and I feel sick. I want to delete it, but I think that will erase all your important comments, and I feel like I should own my ignorance. I've been wrestling with this all day and night. Don't know what to do. Sorry. Most fans were, to their benefit, quick to forgive Misha given his good track record with the fandom, and presumed that the CW had reached out to him to kind of quell the masses. And things did start to cool down. While a few fans were digging themselves deeper and deeper into the conspiracy hole, most of them, I think, just decided to quietly bow out. And that is the story of what it was like to be on Tumblr in the month of November 2020. Yes, all of that happened within the same three-week period. Uh... So, what did we learn from all this? Everything is garbage. Never love anything. Well, no, not really. Caring about things is good. Maybe you don't care about Supernatural or Destiel, but a lot of people really did. And no, it wasn't because horny fangirls wanted to watch the hot guys make out. Those fans are a dime a dozen and probably stopped watching years ago. 
Castiel and Dean really spoke to queer people all across the board. Cass's arc of letting go of his controlling family and finding freedom and happiness in loving someone that they were never supposed to love is a struggle every gay kid who was raised in a mega-religious household can relate to. And yet, I have to ask the question, if they weren't going to do it right, why did they do it at all? What was the fucking point? Robert Barons was the writer for the episode Despair. He's a gay man in real life and has always fought for queer representation in Supernatural. His first credit on the show is the season 9 episode Heaven Can Wait, one of the most shippy episodes between Dean and Cass in the whole show. Barons was also the writer who put together Claire and Kaya, another same-sex couple that was denied their on-screen reunion. At the end of the day, it's hard to say who or what had a hand in ungaying Dean and Cass. The showrunners, the CW execs, COVID. But for Baron's part in all this, I think he was tasked with writing the death of one of the most beloved characters in Supernatural history, and he decided that if he was going to have to take him away from fans, then he was going to give those same fans the validation they deserved. And that's not nothing. When I was a little kid, I owned a dollhouse. I loved that dollhouse. I may have lost most of the original furniture and the dolls that went with it over the years, but nothing gave me more joy than playing with it, making up stories and acting them out. In a way, I think that was the introduction to my love of filmmaking and directing. Getting to tell stories and putting them out there for all to see. So when I was 13 and I finally decided to give away that dollhouse, it was traumatic. It was like I was cho closing a chapter of my life that I knew I would never reopen. This year I graduated from college, and ever since then I feel like I've been standing at the end of a long road with no idea where to go next. I started watching Supernatural when I was in high school, and so I'm always going to associate it with my youth. With Supernatural ending and my college graduation coinciding with each other, it really feels like my dollhouse all over again. Like I'm saying goodbye to a part of myself. And maybe that's why it's so hard to reconcile myself with the ending. Even if the ending had fulfilled all my wishes, maybe I still wouldn't have been happy with it. I know it's stupid to focus so much on a TV show, and in the grand scheme of things, it really won't matter. Supernatural was a simple little show about urban legends and vintage cars that just so happened to attract a fan base that would become really attached to it. So much so that they managed to increase its shelf life by a whole decade. This is not to say that fans should put up with queer baiting. Fans can and should expect more from media. It's almost fucking 2021 and we are so far past the era where queer baiting and burying the gays was acceptable. Supernatural was one of a dying breed in many ways. I don't think fans in the future will have to fight for good representation in their media the same way SPN fans did. Melancholy and even anger is only to be expected. But the show is over. And while I know the instinct is to cling on to what could have been, or lobby insults against a TV company that is probably going to ignore your outrage in the long run, the most healthy thing we can do for ourselves now is to remember what we loved about the show, look back on that part fondly, and just, well, carry on. And if you have any disposable income, might I suggest donating to one or several or all of the amazing fundraisers the fans have set up in honor of the SPN characters. For example, there's one in honor of Castiel that's raising money for the Trevor Project, which is a nonprofit that's dedicated to helping LGBT youths. There's a whole list of them, and I will provide links in the description below if you'd like to donate. At least some good came from all this. Get out your guns Battle's begun Are you a saint or a sinner? If love's a fight Then I shall die With my heart on the trigger They say before you start a war You better know what you're fighting for Well, baby, you are all that I adore what you need, a soldier I will be. I'm an angel with a shotgun, fighting till the war's won. I don't care if it won't take me back. I'll throw away my faith, babe, just to keep you safe. Don't you know you're everything? 